Are you missionaries familiar with the legend of Zelf? I've heard of Zelf, but don't know anything about it. Didn't the early Latter-day Saints discover his bones? Let me tell you what I've read in LDS Church history about this Zelf character. Joseph Smith and about 200 men, along with women and children calling themselves Zion's Camp, were marching from Kirtland, Ohio to Jackson County, Missouri, to redeem Zion. During their travels on June 3, 1834, they came upon an earthen mound near the bank of the Illinois River. From History of the Church by Joseph Smith, Volume 2, pages 79 and 80, we have this recorded account. Quote, The brethren procured a shovel and a hoe, and removing the earth to the depth of about one foot, discovered the skeleton of a man almost entire, and between his ribs the stone point of a Lamanitish arrow, which evidently produced his death. Elder Burr Riggs retained the arrow. The contemplation of the scenery around us produced particular sensations in our bosoms and subsequently the vision of the past being opened to my understanding by the Spirit of the Almighty, I discovered the person whose skeleton was before us was a white Lamanite, a large, thick-set man, and a man of God. That was Zelf, right? Yes. The account goes on to state, His name was Zelf. He was a warrior and a chieftain under the great prophet Onondagas, who was known from the Hilcomorah, or eastern sea to the Rocky Mountains. The curse was taken from Zelf, or at least in part. One of his thigh bones was broken by a stone flung from a sling while in battle years before his death. He was killed in battle by the arrow found among his ribs during the last great struggle of the Lamanites and Nephites. Wow, that's so cool. And it's supported by primary source material from the diaries kept by members of Zion's camp, including three future presidents of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Wilford Woodruff, Heber C. Kimball, and George A. Smith. This is remarkable harmony between all the accounts. And who else but the Prophet Joseph Smith would know that some ordinary-looking Indian bones belong to a white Lamanite named Zelf? That would prove that the Book of Mormon took place in North America, and not in Central America, as other scholars have argued. If Zelf, a righteous man, was fighting under a great prophet general in the last battles between the Nephites and Lamanites, and if that great prophet general was known from the Rocky Mountains to the Hill Cumorah or Eastern area, then some of those battles, and evidently the final battles, took place within the borders of what is now the United States. It is logical to assume that the Hill Cumorah, located in New York, where Joseph dug up the plates that Moroni buried, must be the same Hill Cumorah that was the location of the two massive battles described in the Book of Mormon. That's right. The hill where supposedly a total of 2.2 million Lamanite, Nephite, and Jaredite warriors battled to their deaths using steel swords and other weapons of war. If that is the case, then since no evidence of these massive battles has ever been found in Camorra, New York, no evidence of bones or weapons, those stories might be mere fiction. If those two key stories are fiction, then it stands to reason the entire Book of Mormon may not be real history either. But Joseph was a prophet, and he wouldn't have fabricated the Book of Mormon. You know what I think? The story of Zelf, even though it's outside the narrative of the Book of Mormon, comes from the tendency of Joseph Smith to make up revelation on the fly to suit his purposes and to bolster faith in his followers.